It says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So it's a lot easier to go through destruction than it is through the righteous way. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it, for many are called, but few are chosen. It says, beware of false prophets, that's what we call me the media today, false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, I mean, or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. The tree represents the person, the human, the spirit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you'll know them. By their desires, by their choices, you'll know them. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. That is a powerful statement. He said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. See, lawlessness is not living under the laws that govern the kingdom of Christ. When you live under the laws that govern the kingdom of Christ, you're walking in his path, in his way. To practice lawlessness is living outside of the laws of God. Now, there are laws and there are rules. Amen? Everything, every kingdom, every society has rules and regulations to maintain and protect individuals. So in the kingdom of Christ, it is the same thing. See, people just think because they're filled with the Spirit of God now, they've been delivered, they've been healed, that they can go right back to doing the things whatever they want to do. The Bible tells us that those who are led by the Spirit of God are called sons of God. Not that those who do to choose their wills. So all of these individuals thought they were doing the will of God. But in their life, they were disobedient in areas. They were actually living outside of the kingdom rules, not inside. And Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, do not what? Worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his what? His righteousness. And all things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Worry is fear. Worry is fear. Fear is influence in the power of evil presence. Fear causes people to move anxiously and gets them out of position. They make choices that are outside of the law of God. He says, seek the governing, first the governing law, the rule of his righteousness, and not self-righteousness. And all things will come in due time. His righteousness is established by true relationship. When there's a true relationship, because there's an exchange being made. He's exchanging his righteousness for our self-righteousness. He's exchanging his character for our character, our integrity for his integrity. There's something beginning to happen to us, our dishonesty for his honesty, our disloyalty for loyalty. We begin to feed from the tree of life and not from the tree of good and evil. The good and evil is no longer sufficient for us to live. We can't live that way any longer. Because eating from the tree of good and evil brings a curse. And one of the things we want to do is live a life without curses. Now people, well, Jesus took my curse. Yes, he did. He took the curse of death, hell, and the grave. But there are other curses that come about, ancestral curses, self-imposed curses, temporary curses. Things that we do that bring 
unfulf unfulfilled vows. How many times have you said you're going to do something and didn't do it? You brought a curse on yourself until you repent. I'll be there at 10. You showed up at 11. You lied. See, this is how the enemy stands before God and accuses us of everything. But by the Holy Spirit, we are more than conquerors. We should know these things now. Why? Because the enemy is trying to get us to live out or cooperate out of the law of God, out of the rules of the kingdom, out of the governing kingdom, the governing rules. Is everybody okay? In Romans 8. Verse 1, let's speak it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. He said, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So we see that the two laws. For what the law could not do in it was weak through the flesh that God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? So there is a requirement. This is a righteous requirement. Righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds and their thoughts on the things of the flesh. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, self. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded or thoughts is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who live according to the flesh can never please God. So you got to understand something, that living according to the flesh is a curse. A curse says the powers of darkness have access to you. You know when there's a curse somewhere in your life because there's limitations. You can't advance. Every time you throw it's like an empty curse, you, a, a purse. You, you, no matter how much money you save, it goes. No matter what you do, it goes. The enemy always has access, access to steal, kill, and destroy. There is a curse there. Many people are involved in occultism and all kinds of organizations that have brought curses on them. God is bringing all of these things to the surface now, things that have not been targeted. We do not want to live a life of a curse. Living under a curse is terrible. And many people are living under a curse and don't even know it. Involved in masons. Involved in religions. All kinds of things. Scientology is a curse. All of these are a call to new age. Never repenting for them. Just saying, oh, Jesus took all my curses. Yes, but there are things that are specific that you must repent and break. It's our responsibility. Amen? There is a requirement of obeying, submitting, and following the governing rules. It says, seek the kingdom of Christ and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The spirit of Christ is the Holy Spirit. He is the governor. He is the governor of the kingdom of Christ. It says, the law of life in the spirit, or there's the law of death in the flesh, one or the other. See, there's days when we choose certain things that we bring a curse on ourselves and don't even realize it. And that curse doesn't automatically come, oh, yes, I'm cursing this. You won't know it until things start diminishing. And still things start getting drained. In Hebrews 10. Now, don't get me wrong, not all sicknesses are a curse. Does everybody understand that? I mean, sometimes we bring a self-imposed curse. Amen? Did you ever shake somebody's hand that was sick and you got sick? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, snap. Well, those things are temporary. Amen? The Bible says don't touch the things that are unclean. You bring a curse on yourself. There are cursed items. People are, I've gone to believers' homes and seen all kinds of stuff in their house, and they're sick. And see, because an accursed item will bring the presence of evil. People have magazines in their homes and movies in their homes. I've seen 
pictures in their homes. I saw Indian statues of, statues of witchcraft in their homes and, and Pokemon and all kinds of kids' games and stuff. Videos. There are cursed items. They allow the demonic forces in the home and bring a curse to the home, and they don't even know it. I've got calls from people, come and pray for my mother or whatever. I go to the house, and there is like all of this stuff in this house. I said, man, I'm not even going to pray for you until you move it. Get it out of here. Why? Because the spirit come right back. You can't overcome. There's limitations on a curse all the time. A person can never advance. In fact, the word repent means to turn away, right? Well, see, if a person truly doesn't turn away, then they return. See, it's either repent or return one or the way or the other. And that curse just recycles. It doesn't go anywhere. The Bible talks about ancestral curses, repenting for our forefathers. That's what many of the prophets did in Jeremiah and Isaiah and so forth. They repented. Daniel repented for his forefathers because of the sins of the forefathers. Breaking curses off. We have a teaching on eternal library you can go to. It's called Breaking Off the Curses, Ancestral Curses. In Hebrews 10, 11. Hebrews 10, 11, please. Every priest stands... Ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. This is in the Old Testament. But Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from the time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he perfected forever those who are being sanctified, sanctified, being separated. That, see, that's a process we go through. Breaking off curses, getting sanctified, being separated from the Lord. Verse 15, but the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws. I'll put my laws into their hearts and into their thoughts. See, so we have no excuse then. We know it pleases God and displeases God. We just justify within ourselves, allowing the flesh to lead our life and bringing a curse. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of this, these, there's no longer an offering for sin. Very powerful. Put his governing laws in our hearts, in our thoughts. But that's if you seek his ways and repent from all of our lawless deeds. You know, and this might sound strange to you, but there's medications that will bring a curse on you. In fact, the word uh, drug, uh, uh, pharmakia, which is drug, means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. There are people out there taking psyche medications that don't need them, and they got a curse, and they constantly recycle. They've never even tried to get off of them. We've had people wanting to come into the discipleship program, and they want to smoke. They want to take their medications. Forget it. You're not free then. You won't make it. Why? Because it just brings a person right back where they started from. To get a new life, you must end the old one. I'm going to say it again. To get a new life, you must end the old one. When the Lord asked me one day, he said, Guy, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol or do you want a new life? I never heard that before. I knew the consequences. I tried to get off the drugs and alcohol, but I never really wanted a new life. I didn't know there was one available. I said, I'll, I'll take a new life. I thought something would just, okay, cool. But then he said, show me. Show me. And within a couple months, I had a visitation from the Lord, but I had to fight. I had to endure. I had to show him. How can I show God? How do you show God? You do whatever it takes. You don't go back to your old people, places, and things. That's the only thing I could do. Man, I about locked myself in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts 17, please. Verse 22. And he said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very 
religious. For as I was passing through the con and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in the temples made with hands, nor is he worshiped with the men's hands or as though he needed anything, since he gives all to life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their what? Pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might go for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being, as also some of their own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art or man's devising. Truth, truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he ordained, has given assurance of all this by raising him from the dead. Again, there are pre-pointed timings for each and every one of us. God has pre-pointed things, predestined things for each and every one of us. But we still must be obedient and follow the rules of the kingdom. Boundaries are rules. Laws are placed in for protection. All should seek the Lord and his righteousness and the governing rules of his kingdom. In other words, we already know that it's in us. Now we just have to seek it. In Matthew 3. In verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this he who is spoken by the prophet of Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. How many all know God's preparing to return? Amen. So there's a shaking and a quaking everywhere. Things are being exposed. God is saying, I need my bride cleansed. He's raising up the bride right now. He's cleansing. He's breaking off the curses. He's exposing all the things that are hindering us. But we must be obedient all the way through. Amen? See, <laughs> repent is not weeping. It's not weeping. Reaping. Repentance is not sorrow. Even though we do that emotionally. Amen? But repentance means turning away from the law of the flesh and doing the work of righteousness and holiness. So we're turning away from the old. Without turning away, you just recycle and they're that curse. So there's a difference of repent or return. <laughs> we're to repent from the sinful arena and return to Christ in his law or if you don't, you'll obviously return again. Because people cry. Look at man. Everybody here has repented at some time and cried and wept and felt sorry for something they did. That could be true repentance. But when people are sorry that they got caught, that's a different thing. That's not true repentance. Hello. Oh, girl, I'm sorry I got caught. Nice. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on our Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, and humility. Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may what? Come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. If they've been taken captive to do the will of the devil, means they've been taken captive in the mind. Amen? So obviously there's a curse there. 
There's a curse to being taken captive. There's a curse. There's limitations taking captivity in the mind. Remember, your mind is the storage of all memory. It means it's been corrupted. It's been what? Corrupted. See, many people are making the God of their making instead of God who he is. It's different. When you begin to make the God according to your God, according to your making, it's idolatry. Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become what? Defiled. Will anything defile bring a curse? Yes. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Wow. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. Think about this. He sold his birthright. He wanted to inherit the blessing, and he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears, sorrow, but he didn't turn. Many have sold their positional birthright for a moment of sinful pleasure of the flesh, leaving in the governing law of the kingdom of Christ. Colossians 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things of above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, I'm going to say that again, Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil, desire, covetousness, which is what? Idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Now, but now you yourselves are to put off these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, thin, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Idolatry is a worship of the flesh and self, which is lawlessness and is a curse. Second Peter 2, verse 12. But these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin enticing unstable souls they have a heart trained in covetous practices and are cursed children sounds like the democratic party hello anybody that serves darkness either you're serving christ or self amen these are cursed children a cursed children why because they're living outside the governing laws of the kingdom of christ they're living under the curse Deuteronomy 11, in verse 26. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you what? Obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And a curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you 
today to go after other gods or idols which you have not known. It's a warning. Who can be your greatest idol? Ourself. Some people spend more time in the mirror than they do in the Bible. Hello? Jeremiah 17, in verse 5. Again, remember that we're to be seeking these things out where there's limitations, where there's something that just constantly repeats itself, where there's something that you can't break free from. There's a curse. Verse 5, thus says the Lord, curses the man who trusts in himself. Hello? Makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. That means dry. He shall not see when good comes. That means he's going to miss opportunities. He's blinded. Inconsistent. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Again, unable to be satisfied in the presence of God and unable to enter the presence of God. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be a tree planted by the waters with which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes, nor will its leaf be green, and will not be what? Anxious, anxious in a year of drought when trouble comes, nor will you cease yielding fruit. He'll always bear good fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the thoughts of man even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Remember, the heart is the core of all desire. You'll know them by their desire. You know what they choose. That's how you determine people. When you know what things that satisfy them. Amen? Psalm 78, verse 40. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and did what? And limited the Holy One of Israel. In other words, when there's limitations. See, there's things that we're preventing God to do. Amen? Limited the Holy One. <laughs> we limited his guidance, his influence, forgetting his promises, his rescues. Forgetting all the things that he's done for us and making choices according to the flesh or fear or anxiety and bringing a wrong or bringing a curse on ourselves because some of the choices we made. Go to Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. Look at how many things have been inherited to us. Even all the witchcraft stuff, which we didn't know. And my mother used to practice witchcraft and thought it was just holy. I didn't know it. Certain things. I mean, goofy things. Using certain things, you know. Garlic and whatever. Here, let's bring this healing on you. Yeah, all right. And we'll just put this over you. Okay. I wonder why I turned out the way I was. I was a demonized kid. Of course, they used to call me a little devil anyway, so. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's go further. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. That means abortion now. Or one who practices witchcraft or soothsayer. Or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer. Or one who conjures spells or medium or spiritus. Or one who calls up the dead. I want to raise the dead, not call them up. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Because these are abominations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess. Listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Look how many believers still look up their horoscope every day and bring a curse on themselves. 
I'm a Gemini, I'm this, I'm that. I don't care. I'm a Christian. Does everybody understand? Man, they look up their horse. They go into, let me tell you another thing. They go into these Chinese restaurants and whatever, and they can't wait to get that cookie. They're crunchy. And there's a message in every cookie. Don't read them. Oh, this is what it says. <gasps> Take the message, put it in the bottle, throw it out in the garbage. Eat the cookie, but break the curse off before you eat it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Look at go to first Samuel fifteen. Listen, if there's something you don't, if the Bible tells us that being led by the Spirit, you have control over self and other things. You have control over your members and your desires. You have control over your flesh and your soul. You have control over your emotions. If you don't, something is there. And there's a curse. Amen? 1 Samuel 15, 22. So Samuel said to Saul, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. Now listen, Samuel thought he was doing the right thing. God said, go out, kill everybody at this, the Amalekites and whatever. Kill the king, kill the kids, kill everything. Why? Because they are offsprings of the Nephilim race. Don't bring nothing back. Don't take their spoil. We don't want anything. Kill everything. We want to annihilate it. Samuel comes back with the king. Spoil, gold, all kinds of stuff, and, and cattle. I mean, not Samuel, uh, Saul. And then he tells Samuel, and the Lord goes, and the Samuel comes up and says, man, what have you done? Saul goes, what do you mean? I think I did a good thing, man. No, see, he did. What he thought was right instead of obeying what God told him to do. And this is where many people are falling. Watch this because this is so powerful. This is where people bring a curse on themselves. Verse 23. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Is witchcraft a curse? Yeah. And stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord's going to reject you for maintaining position. Hello, does everybody see this? Saul lived under the curse until he died. He was tormented. He was taken captive by a distressing spirit because he disobeyed God. But see, he thought he was doing the right thing. But God told him what to do, and he chose to do something different. That's where he said, many will stand before me and say, Lord, Lord, Lord. And God said, I didn't tell you to do that. People are going to find out that many of the things that they did was not from the Lord. And there will be no reward for those things. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Can you imagine standing before God and God says, man, you robbed me. I think that person probably blacked right out. <laughs> Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And then I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, the one who tries to steal, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. For all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. People rob God all the time and don't even know it. 
they justify in their mind or they allow their emotions to determine what they're giving. I've gotten checks that were right down to the cents, $23.15. I'm thinking, dear God, spare me. That person's never going to advance. That's a limitation. It's called fear. Remember that, the woman that, that didn't have anything, but what she had was two coins, and she gave it all, but you know, God blessed her. See, some, look at, sometimes we have to give out of our lack, amen? Then God provides more. Then he builds it up where you're able to give more and more and more and more, and you're getting more and more and more. But people bring a curse on themselves because they give according to their emotion. Or they don't give more. They don't give. Some people breed curse because they're not giving out of a grateful heart, a joyful heart. Oh, I got to give this much. <laughs> Great. You're cursed, homie. Hello? 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. The coming in the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan, not your neighbor. Hello. And it's like your neighbor can't be a Satan worshiper. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness or lawlessness. Does everybody see that? It says, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren beloved, for by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, stand fast, hold everything. Don't be swayed. Don't be misled. Amen. Be consistent and be alert. That's what I want to share. Coming out of the lawless one, the coming of the lawless one, we must come out of all of that lawlessness and come out of there under the curse. All of these individuals are living outside of the rule of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to close at Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments. Hmm. That means abide under the rules of the kingdom. Amen. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, but outside are dogs and sorcerers. Under the word dog means demonized individuals. And sexual immoral and murders and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. Outside, those who are living outside of the rules of the kingdom of Christ are cursed. They cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says those that serve the flesh cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because you might have a curse in your life doesn't mean in certain things you can't. Hello? But God wants to break us free from everything. What the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If the spirit doesn't have access to somewhere, then someone else does. It's either a holy spirit or an unclean spirit. Amen? We want to be free. Thoughts, desires, pure heart, clean hands. Living, too many are living under the curse and don't even know it. Why? Because they're limited, recycling all the time. It's a curse. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for revelation and understanding. Lord, we choose to come out from underneath the curse. Incest is a curse, brings a curse on people. There's many curses that do bring sicknesses. 
But thank God Jesus daily loads us with benefits so that we can repent, turn, and expose these things and break these things off and remove these spirits that carry curses to us. So, Lord, seal your word and bring vision and sight that we may see those things that so hinder us and limit us and break us from all curses that we may follow you in truth, spirit, and in power and freedom in Jesus' name. Amen.